fun, guys. Hey, I want to uh, thank Kevin along with SEMA CEO and President Chris Kirsting, along with Warren Kosakoff and Mike Spagnola, the entire SEMA team, and their chairman, Tim Martin. Let's give the leadership of SEMA a round of applause for making this venue what it is. Thank you, guys. You know, Chevrolet and SEMA, we have an amazing history together. It goes back for decades and decades. We always love bringing products for the street, for the track, and of course for the hot rodders, like all of us. And we have a lot of folks in our GM and Chevrolet team that are here with us that share your passion, including a guy who loves performance, he loves design, he loves innovation, he loves SEMA, and that's the president of General Motors. Mark Royce is here. Mark, it's great to have you here at SEMA again. Way to also, uh, with him is members of his team that also love this car business so much. Ken Morris, Ken Kelzer, Tim Herrick, Greg Warden, Josh Tavel, Steve Hill, Mark Dickens, Al Oppenheiser, Debbie Murphy, Roger McCormick, and Matt Noon. Guys, thanks for being here. And if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's get started. So, first up is an all-new Chevrolet for the street. It has a history over six decades long. You've seen the pictures. Oh, yeah. But you haven't seen it in person. Let's bring it on up. A little music, guys. Give me a little music. Oh, no. No music. This one, a Stingray convertible. Wow. Mid-engine. Here it is. Behind the wheel. There's a guy named, who is knows Corvette racing well. He is a, uh, a three-time driver's champion. He's a two-time winner of the 24 Hours of Le Mans. Yeah, he won the 24 Hours of Daytona one time. He won 12 Hours of Sebring four times. Please welcome Ron Fellows. Hey, Ron. Ron, wait, it's great to see you, buddy. And with them is our Chevrolet Global Chief Designer, Phil Zach. Ch Phil, welcome, buddy. Thank Guys, you. Uh, Ron, you have driven a lot of Corvettes over the years. You've won a lot of races for Corvettes, a lot of championships. What do you think? Wow. <laughs> um, this is obviously the, the mid-engine, this first generation with the mid-engine uh, is absolutely spectacular. I've got uh, a 2,300 mile road trip under uh, under me in the, in the C8. And uh, the, the interior is spectacular, um, so comfortable, particularly for those of us uh, taller. Um, the visibility with the sloped nose and the windshield and being set forward, uh, it's, it's awesome on the road and the, uh, on the track. A we smile. had some fun too. A smile. Yeah. And Ron, uh, Ron leaves a high performance uh, driving school here in West Las Vegas from Nevada for our Chevrolet customers. Uh, what do you think? Can you wait to get this on the track? Well, this is—I uh, I think this is going to be a, a game changer for for uh, anybody who's looking to do a track day. Never mind uh, going to the grocery store. Uh, this is uh, uh, this is our for the school. This is our third generation of, of Corvette, and uh, I can't wait to get to get started with the program. It's a, it's an awesome car. Uh, in the words of my wife, you're so much more connected to the road. There After she drove it. So there you Linda, go. Linda knows that. Well, thank you, Ron. And Phil, uh, leading the design team at Chevrolet, Corvette is a special one to work on. Tell everybody a little bit about the design. What what the highlights, what do you love about it? Share with everybody your points on this design. All right. First of all, I hope you like it. We love it. Um, yeah. Overall, with Corvette, in order to talk about the convertible, I almost have to start and talk about uh, the coupe a little bit because every Corvette is designed as a convertible, so it is an uncompromised car from a structure standpoint. Uh, but the biggest thing for us as we launch the vehicle, obviously the engine moving to the rear of the vehicle totally changes the proportion of the vehicle, more exotic, mid-engine, uh, truly a supercar now. But with this, what we wanted to make sure that we maintain was the integrity of Corvette. So you'll see the muscular fenders, front rear, it really has a, a planted stance, wide, capable. The front end of the vehicle, the lamps, they're very assertive. Uh, you definitely see them coming up on your rear view mirror, it means business. The dual element tail lamps on the back, purely say Corvette. So we're really excited about where the vehicle is. The challenge on the convertible, uh, if you just take a vehicle and lop the top off the rear, you kind of lose the proportion, you lose the exotic feel. So the team was really cognizant of what they did on the vehicle. And if you look at the rear, uh, we use a lot of inspiration from jet fighters, race cars. That was really the inspiration for the design team. And then the cells, as we call them, behind the, uh, the seats, it's really like a jet fighter, the cockpit. You kind of see what's behind you as it, as it goes back. 
from rear three quarter views and from side view, you still have that muscular feel, which really plays well for the vet. Uh, we also worked heavily with engineering on the execution of the top, so that works. And another one was uh, cooling. So if you look on the rear, some of the venting through there, very much like you'd see on a, on a jet fighter. So from an inspiration standpoint, we could not be more excited about where this car is at. I love it. And uh, Phil and his team work with us, uh, many of our engineers here on our accessories. Talk a little bit about the wheels on here and then a few of the accessories. So from an accessory side and just a customization side, we know how the customers want unique, different, new. They want their own vehicle. So we've got uh, options coming out, splitters, uh, uh, additional wheels. This is a tri-spoke trident wheel, black, milled face. You can get Jake center caps. On top of the stuff that you can normally get in the vehicle, for instance, we have 12 exterior colors now, more than we've ever had before, uh, four caliper colors. We have nine interior color options. We have three different seats. We've got a GT1, GT2 uh, Touring, and we also have a competition seat along with uh, six seatbelt colors, myriad of options that you can go so you can truly get a uh, a bespoke uh corvette and at sema that's what it's all about making your vehicle your own customizing it the engine is a 6.2 liter lt2 small block v8 495 horsepower with the performance exhaust zero to 60 you guys ready 2.9 seconds no. an amazing stat top speed of 194 miles an hour we couldn't be more excited to bring the corvette you got to come and check it out uh, and guys, you talked about the coupe, we talked about the convertible, talked about the driving school. Ron, you're a racer. Phil, you love racing. Shouldn't we race it? Absolutely. Every quarter. Well, you gotta race it. So bring it on out. Guys, give me a little bit of music. Behind the wheel is the guy who has been a two-time champion in the IMSA series. He's won the 24 Hours of Le Mans in 2011 and 2015. Please welcome Corvette racing driver Tommy Milner. Tommy, welcome, buddy. Thanks, Jim. Good awesome. Be here. Well, hey, man, you're the guy that uh, gets behind here and races these things. What do you think about your new ride? I mean, we're super excited about the C8R. Um, a lot of hard work from the crew guys, from the engineers, design team, you know, all these guys for a, for a long time now to make this car happen. Um, done some testing with it already, and um, as a driver, I mean, we're super excited about this car. The way that it feels driving it now that we're a little bit further forward in the car, um, the way that we feel the feedback from the car is just that much faster, which is what we're looking for. That's great. And tell me about where you tested this car, two or three of the tracks you've been at. Yeah, so we've tested, first test was at uh, Road America. We've also tested at VIR at uh, Road Atlanta. We've done some testing um, at the Milford Proving Grounds as well. So um, a lot of secretive testing, but um, uh, yeah, I mean, again, you know, here we are on the eve of uh, this this first race for this car, so we're super excited. That is great. Hey, Ron, you helped us develop the very first C5R. What do you think? <laughs> Can an old Corvette racing driver get 10 laps? Oh, of course. <laughs> I just want 10 laps. You're in. Well, hey, this is the first clean sheet approach since the car that Ron helped develop, the C5R. First time we have the most shared components between the race car and the production car, over 100 shared components. Of course, we have Michelin tires on the on the production car, the race car, mobile one oil in the engine. And uh, this has a 5.5 liter V8. It's going to give us plenty of power to get the job done. So, guys, uh, what I would just tell you, uh, thinking about all of you up here, Phil, from a design perspective, the work you did with Corvette Racing, along with our engineering team and our propulsion team, this is the result, as well as a production car, a total, total team effort. It's the only way you win races, that's for sure. So guys, thank you for bringing this up. First race, Tommy, for this car is? Uh, the 24 hours of Daytona, end of January. That's great. Guys, thanks for bringing up the race car. I love it. Thanks for bringing up the production car. Ron Fellows, Phil Zach, Tommy Miller, thank you guys. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Way to go, guys. Well, 
Hey, I will tell you, we've got uh, SEMA as a place where we always introduce our new performance catalog. This is no different. And right up here to my right and your left is our new Chevrolet performance catalog. On the cover, what are we featuring? The Corvette Stingray with the mid-engine configurations. So we'd love that. Inside, you're going to learn all about the Corvette Coupe and Convertible, all the accessories, all the performance parts inside the catalog. you got to come by the Chevy exhibit to pick one up. And of course, you can get one online as well. And on the right-hand side, we're celebrating, listen to this, guys, 65 years of the Chevy small block. Do you guys love the small block like I do? I love it. And on the cover is the SP383. This is a stroker, and now it has electronic fuel injection. you got to come by the display and check it out. And Chevrolet offers 41 crate engines, small blocks, big blocks, LS, LTs, circle track, and dirt, and dirt track racing engines. We have the widest offering of crate engines of any OEM, period. Come by and check it out. And on my left and your right, we also have crate powertrain systems where we put the engine and transmission, two controllers, program to work together, connect them together, and get ready to cruise. We also have emissions compliant configurations. And in fact, we have 84 engine and transmission combinations. We have manuals and automatics. And what I'll tell you, for you and your customers, we want to be the, uh, the engine of choice for all of your project vehicles and that of your business. So swing by Chevrolet and absolutely check it out. Well, we've shown you a Chevrolet for the street, the Corvette Stingray Convertible. We showed you one for the track, the C8R, which will debut in January. We showed you the, talked about the crate engines for your business and for your customers. But SEAM is a great place to think about what could be next, what is possible. Think about the history. Last year, we introduced the Ecopo. A, crate e, a, a concept E crate propulsion system, 800 volts, nine second ETs, 140 mile an hour trap speeds. Others may follow us, we watch. Others may try to follow us, but we're gonna take another bold step tonight. Let's take a look. Uh-oh, we got bold steps. What's going on? Something, yeah. Bring it up. Uh-oh, what we got? Looks like a Chevy with Ford headlights. Ah, oh, C10, look at that. We Ladies and gentlemen, this is a 1962 Chevrolet E10 concept. Welcome Russell Blanitz and Rich Downing from our engineering team. Guys, come on out. Here they are. Russ, looks great, man. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah, we're super excited. And Rich is here as well. And guys, uh, it looks great. I didn't hear a thing. So, uh, Russ, you got to tell us about the concept. Walk us through it, and while Rich puts the hood up. So last year we came with the E10, Closer. Closer. and now this year, this is our next step in our E-Crate. We took two bolt, complete batteries and full electronic systems, and then we built a next generation crate replacement E-Crate package. It actually has two next generation motors, that are set up to bolt in and replace your current internal combustion engine. And, and what do they fit into? They fit in the bell housing? And yeah, the, it has a LS bell and crank flange. You basically put a flex plate on, it bolts right up to, in this truck, we have a 4L75E, one of our crate transmissions. So what Russ is saying is, this is a direct replacement for an IC engine. For an internal combustion engine, this system is a concept E-Crate engine. It's another generation. You're saying more co more production components than we had last year. And it fits right into the bell housing and connects to a 4L75E. Exactly. Any of our crate transmissions. What about 0 to 60 times? 0 to 60 will be in the high 5 second range. And what about, uh, speaking of range, about yeah. what's the range? Yeah, Similar the range will be right in the same as our Bolt EV. And um, really one of the concepts that we had when we put this together was the hot rod power tour. So we wanted to make sure we could go at least every distance without a charge. That's great. And then speaking of charging, how do you charge it up and how fast does it charge? Yeah, so one of the great things about running two independent systems is it allows us to independently charge each battery, both with the standard plug-in and DC fast charge. Thank you, Russ. Rich, tell us about the build. You quarterback the build. Tell us about it. Yeah, we scoured the classifieds like everyone else, and I was lucky enough to find this uh, donor vehicle in uh, near Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, with a team of experts across our entire organization, we were able to pull this truck together in 18 weeks. Uh, so it was a, a massive undertaking for the entire team. 
Uh, it features a lot of carbon composite components, uh, including our front roll pan, rear roll pan, and the tonneau cover, developed by our design studio for aero performance, uh, and a host of body mods, including a recessed grill, a smooth hood, uh, shaved drip rails, extended <laughs> rockers, raised rear wheel openings, and the uh, smooth, smooth tailgate. tailgate. Yeah. yeah. What about the lighting system? Yeah, so we LED lighting throughout the entire vehicle, uh, including our signature LED lighted bow ties on the front, the rear, and on the dash. And the chassis has been reinforced uh, dramatically in a heavy duty adjustable air suspension, 12 inch disc brakes. 20 inch front and 22 inch rear wheels. And from an integration standpoint, uh, we've developed a cooling system to be able to allow that fast charge time that Russ talked about earlier, uh, as well as uh, regenerative braking. Guys, last year you brought the Ecopo, this year you got the E10 with even more production components. So this concept's another step towards an e crate propulsion system. We love ICE engines, but together, let's dream about what could be next. And we wanted to take another step in that direction and SEMA is a perfect place to do just that. Russ and Rich, thank you very much. Let's get back in there. Let's drive it back down the ramp because we want to show everybody after this uh, press conference is over here. So let's get pop in there. Give us a little bit of music on the way down guys. <laughs>